So just to go through um, the presentation itself, you know, we'll be meeting Professor Schmidt. Um, we'll also be talking about driving forces in the program, um, why choose the program, along with the program details, and some information about the online classroom, admissions requirements, and then questions at the very end. Oops. All righty. Um, and for now, uh, this is Bernard Schmidt. He is the program director, and I'll give him the floor to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Professor Schmidt. I'm the uh, currently an instructor and uh, acting director of the Data Analytics Engineering Program. Our normal director, Dr. James Baldo, is currently away on sabbatical for the past year. He's going to be gone for the next year, but uh, the program is well in hand. Uh, with me in charge right now. In fact, uh, I'm actually a graduate of this program as well. I started in the program back in the fall of 2013 when it was just a four course certificate and graduated myself back in the spring of 2017. So I, I am definitely somebody who knows the program very, very well from the student's perspective, so. Wonderful. Alrighty, so um, Professor Schmidt, uh, what would you say is the background of this program? Okay, well, that's an easy one because I was there right at the very beginning, so I can answer this. So it all started actually back in uh, 2011 when uh, George Mason University had a contract with the US government intelligence agency to provide a series of seminars about big data. Uh, that was around the time um, that people started realizing that uh, big data analytics was going to be the next wave along with cybersecurity. And so um, we gave a series of presentations, like I said, to a, a government agency. Thereafter that, once the seminar was done, George Mason University realized that this was an up and coming area and that we needed to actually create a, a degree program for it. So uh, data analytics engineering is a multidisciplinary uh, program, and that's going to lead me into why it was created, uh, is a multidisciplinary program. We draw on courses from other academic departments. So we're not an academic department by itself. Normally, when you think about a degree program, it uh, contain you take, you know, for example, computer science, you're gonna take all nothing but computer science courses. But one of the things we realized early on is that data analytics engineering covers skill sets across the spectrum. So when you normally go into a degree program, you get a lot of depth of knowledge, but we give you the breadth of knowledge you need to be uh, 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 effective in this day and age. And so that's how this course got start, uh, program got started. As I mentioned, it started in the fall of 2013 as a four course certificate. And then in the uh, fall of 2014, the master's degree was approved. And we, so we've been, we've been in uh, as a degree program for nearly 10 years now. And why would you say um, there is a need for this program in today's society? That's a very good question, Miriam. Uh, data analytics and engineering is important because it involves gathering and studying data to form insights that can be used to make decisions. We often use a tagline from data to decisions in this program to really drive what this is all about. So, you know, the information that's derived can be useful in many different ways. For example, you could use it to build a business strategy or ensure the safety and efficiency of an engineering project. So data engineers are set up, are, you know, set up analytics databases and data pipelines for operational use. Uh, and much of the work is really spent in preparing the big data because a lot of data is actually, the majority of data we find these days is what we call unstructured data. You know, structured data is the kind of data you might find in a relational database system where the fields are well known, the data values are well known. But now more and more so, if you look at um, what's out available world today, we have lots of unstructured data, uh, text documents, um, uh, chat sessions, um, uh, things like, you know, videos on YouTube, right? These are all unstructured data elements. And so we need to be able to know how to process them along the way. So, so much of the job of a data analytics engineer is preparing the big data and ensuring that the data flows work optimally. 
you know, data engineers get, you know, good way to look at it is data engineers gather and prepare the data and that for the data scientists to use the data to promote better business decisions. Now, in our program, while we recognize we're not a true data science curriculum, you know, you can think about the difference as um, a data scientist is someone who builds a machine, you know, builds a machine learning model versus an analytics engineer that uses that analytics uh, machine learning model. Um, we are very much an applied program. In fact, one of the things I like to tell students is, and, and others when they ask about this is we're more of a professional degree like a master of business administration. An MBA degree is considered a professional degree, and that's a good way to look at data analytics engineering. It's also a professional degree as well. We give you, teach you a, a, a bunch of skill sets that can be applicable to any domain space. Um, and so, and that's, by the way, that's not to say our students don't go on to PhD programs. They can if they want to, but typically students that enter our program uh, enter it in order to be able to um, uh, get get high paying jobs in industry right now. And speaking of the industry, are there any industry trends that you could share? Sure. Basically, with data analytics engineering, um, the kinds of skill sets we're looking seeing at industries at, uh, needs for this program is coding and data warehousing. You have to have knowledge of operating systems, especially when you're working in cloud environments. Database systems, obviously, we talked about relational databases, but then you also have NoSQL databases. Not, you know, these are databases that are not your traditional relational database. They're um, document databases, they're graph databases, they're intended for these uh, what we call semi-structured data, where you might bring in documents and stuff and store them in these data set, these NoSQL databases. Uh, certainly, data analysis. We give you. We teach you a lot of skills around that from statistics perspective. Because at the end of the day, big data analytics is all about statistics, one way or the other. Whether it's machine learning models or just doing a simple median or mean. All right, you're all going to be dealing with statistics. Um, Critical thinking skills are very important, as well as basic understanding of machine learning and communication skills. So these are the sorts of things we're seeing there. Um, and uh, when we look at uh, what employers are looking for, they're looking for experience in working with data, um, structured query language or SQL mastery, certainly programming language expertise and the two programming languages I want to call out are, are primarily Python and R. Um, especially given there are large volumes of libraries out there. But then there are other programming languages such as Scala, which are used in specific in, uh, environments that are related to uh, big data. Um, being able to communicate, interpersonal skills, uh, knowledge of the various tools out there. You know, yes, while you're, you can build a, a machine learning model using uh, a Python and uh, code libraries, um, you'll find more and more these days that there are a lot of automated tools out there. For example, in AWS, their machine learning tool is, is AWS SageMaker. Uh, we have a faculty member who has a company called Acure, and he developed a, machine, a, a, a workbench that resides on top of uh, the machine learning tools on various cloud plat platforms called Momentum. And so a lot of our students in our capstone course uh, get an opportunity to use Momentum if they happen to have a project that is machine learning based. Um, also, uh, speaking of machine learning, the, you wouldn't think of machine learning or natural language processing as tr a tr uh, associated with data analytics engineering. It's typically that's in the has been in the past in the purview of data scientists. But the reality of the situation is, unless you're actually going to build the model or build the tools like a data scientist would, data analytics engineers use those tools they you know we for example momentum um our we have students that um come into the capstone course have not taken any machine learning courses yet they are able to very quickly and easily train build and train a machine learning model using tools like that so being able to uh, master data engineering tools um is very very important um Tableau for visualization is another big one. Um, Alteryx Designer, those, you know, these are all analytics tools that are on the marketplace today that just, it's like using a calculator. They make your job so much easier um, than having to necessarily code things um, by hand with R or Python. Um, and then lastly, when we talk about cloud implementations, 
um, especially things like machine learning models, right? There's this, there's this concept of continuous integration, continuous delivery in a production environment. And so what we're finding now is that in addition to the basic set of skills, that being able to take something that's in a development environment and migrating it into a production environment or taking something in a production environment and constantly updating it. For example, machine learning models will drift over time. And so you have to retrain them uh, on occasion. And so that becomes what's known as ML ops or machine learning operations. That's an important skill set. Um, taking something that was developed in a, uh, in a development environment and migrating it into a production cloud environment, that's called DevSecOps. All right, and so these are these are also skills that industry is now starting to ask for that we have to train our students in. So, um, so you're probably wondering right now why what makes our data analytics engineering program unique? Well, for starters, it's a multidisciplinary approach that allows students to get a breadth of uh, topics. Uh, rather than just the depth of topics. Yes, you can you know, go into you know, uh, uh, select courses that can go very deep into a particular topic area, but we prefer to be able to uh, have our students be more generalists because they will then be able to apply those skills in any subject matter domain they migrate to once they graduate from the program. Uh, on top of that, you know, George Mason University is one of the top 100 best rated engineering schools by US News and World Report. Um, the online format is certainly designed to allow the best analytics professionals to learn in advance in, science, in the science together. Uh, we have some very world renowned faculty with industry experience. Um, and so that's very helpful as well. And if you don't want to do the full degree program, we do have a uh, four course online certificate option, which if you're already in the workplace doing analytics, a certificate is oftentimes a very good way to justify a, a big raise to your employer uh, for, the, for, for showing the quality of work that you're doing. Now, when we talk about the curriculum, you basically have to, if you're doing the, uh, the d uh, data analytics uh, certificate, you only need the first four courses here, AIT 580, Big Data to Information, CS504, Principles of Data Management and Mining, uh, OR531, Introduction to Analytics and Modeling, and STAT515, Applied Statistics and Visualization for Analytics. Those four courses are core to the program and are, are basically make up our certificate. If you go into the master's program itself, there's a fifth core course, which is our six, DAN 690, Data Analytics Project. That's my course that I, uh, I'm the course coordinator with. And so um, that I consider that my baby because I put all the t my time and effort into constantly improving the, that course for our students. That's where students actually work on real, real world data analytics engineering projects for uh, not, not made up Kaggle competition co uh, type projects but real world projects that are gonna be similar to what you're going to find when you actually go out into the workplace if you're, if you're looking to change careers uh, at this point in time. Now, our online program is not as big as our um, on-ground program. Our on-ground program has 13 different concentrations with uh, uh, over 100 uh, potential courses you could take. Um, but that's, you know, in the online format where the courses have to be designed to be taught asynchronously over an eight week uh, period. And that's, by the way, it's another big difference. Um, in a 15 week normal semester, you would have 15 weeks to complete a course because you are, um, this course uh, is set up in two eight week, back to back eight week sessions. You're essentially cramming 15 weeks worth of work into an eight weeks uh, session. And so you have to be cognizant of the fact that if in a normal 15 week class, you're expected to spend about 10 hours outside the classroom mastering the course material, either through reading or homeworks or assignments um, in a this online program, and, and I'm setting realistic expectations here. You may have weeks where maybe it's a little more, a little less, but on average, you have to dedicate 20 hours a week. And that means spending like two hours, uh, the way to look at it is spending a couple hours each night 
working on your coursework. You don't want to defer it to the weekend because a lot of courses they actually have uh, assignment due dates in the middle of the week. Um, and, and certainly when there's a lot of work to be done, you don't want to, you know, give your entire weekends away just doing these online programs. So, you know, the key to success is to budget your time accordingly and, you know, spend a couple hours each night on the work so that you're not overwhelmed uh, uh, through each week as you go through the coursework. Now, in this case here, what we have, we actually now have 21 elective courses. There's the DAN 698 Independent Research Project course, where if a student wants to do independent research, they can propose a project and we review it and decide whether it warrants a, a, a is, is good enough to warrant as an individual research. Otherwise, we have uh, courses from four different departments um, that we have the information science and technology elective courses. And this is where you'll find uh, most of the database and uh, um, uh, machine learning and natural language processing courses. They're very good. Um, we have systems and CORE, which is our systems engineering and operations research department. And they have some very good courses related to uh, business analytics and decision sciences. Um, in our electrical and computer engineering department, we actually have a couple of courses um, related to digital forensics. Um, you wouldn't think that big data has anything to do with digital forensics, but actually, uh, it really does. For example, if you're um, one of the, uh, if you're looking, you know, for intrusions into a system, it's oftentimes very hard to actually find when individuals have broken into your system, unless you happen to know what you know, a, a normal system operation looks like, and then you can actually f use data analytics to find anomalies in systems. And that's how a lot of times um, in the cybersecurity realm, people are using data analytics to detect for intrusion detection. And then finally, for folks that are kind of uh, have a business uh, uh, idea, you can take, we have four courses uh, from our MBA, uh, from the uh, School of Business. It's actually uh, general business elective courses, but they actually are there uh, for their MBA courses. So, um, so we do have uh, uh, 21 different courses to select from and uh, it's, it's, it's actually a, a well rounded out right now at this time. I see there's a question, a couple of questions in chat. Um, do you want, do we want to uh, work with them right now? Or do we want to wait till the end? That's completely up to you. If you'd rather just answer all questions at the end, maybe there's something that is going to be covered. Okay, why don't we, uh, I'll wait till the end. Well, we, we'll answer those, I'll, I'll, I've noted them in chat. We'll go ahead and wait until the end to answer those. Sure. Okay. So when we talk about an asynchronous online format, uh, the courses are um, uh, structured. They're all, you know, you go from course to course. Um, they're very similar in their structure, how they're laid out in Blackboard. And uh, this is just an example. Uh, I mentioned Dr. Baldo earlier, who is our director of the program. This is an example. I don't know if that's an actual video you can click on to play. No, that's just screen capture. Okay. All right. So why don't you go ahead and uh, finish up uh, the next slide, and I'll go ahead and uh, answer questions after that. Sure. Yeah, so the admissions process, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we do have some prerequisites for the data analytics engineering program. Um, we do require that students take one uh, course of calculus, one course of statistics, and one uh, computer programming course. In addition, um, we do ask that you have a minimum of 3.0 for your GPA and a bachelor's degree from an accredited institution. Um, we also ask that you submit your transcripts and your professional resume, make sure it's up to date. Um, and then we do ask for two letters of recommendation. Um, they must be professional recommendations and not personal. And then there is a personal statement that also needs to be written for the application itself. All righty. And now we will take those questions. All right. So uh, let me start with the two that I've got there. So I'm going to sure. uh, go with the easiest one first. Uh, Amir um, uh, Nabapur asked, 
how about the course evaluation? Are they uh, project-based or exam-based? And Amir, that depends on the course. Um, a lot of courses are exam-based, um, but uh, like, uh, but uh, uh, for some of them, like our data analytics engineering project, is project-based. And so, it, in fact, it's a team project. So um, in that case, uh, your, your grade is based on how well you, and uh, no, that's another good exception, by the way. Um, thank you for bringing that up about project-based work. The DAN 690 course uh, our cap, our, is our capstone course. It, uh, it's the one exception to the online program. You must take that course over 15 weeks in the fall or spring or over 12 weeks over the summer. Uh, it's the one exception to the rule where normally it's an eight week session. You cannot complete a, data, a, a full blown real world data analytics project in eight weeks. And so when you take that course, you're gonna be taking it for, for that full duration. So um, the next question was from, uh, let's see, Louis uh, Katakora. And you're asking about the difference between the MSDAN and the MSIT. Uh, Applied IT with the data analytics intelligence and, uh, uh, analysis. Um, it really depends on, uh, and, and they're very similar. I mean, we, we use similar courses. The applied IT program, uh, online program, um, uh, developed, a, we first started developing a lot of courses. And then when they built their online program, they used the courses we developed. And then subsequently, they built some more online courses that we were able to develop. That's why we are. Um, when you take those courses, you'll find students from both online programs in them. The big difference is that uh, if you just want to take courses that are in the uh, offered by IST, then you know feel free to go ahead and take uh, you know go in the uh, MS uh, IT program. You know if you feel that you know those courses will give you the what you need for your job. Uh, the big you'll notice though that. Uh, our program has additional courses from other academic departments that give you a little more depth of a breadth of knowledge. For example, uh, some uh, you get some skill sets in the CR courses that you wouldn't necessarily get in the IT courses. Let's see. Um, yes, and then um, Toka had a question about. Uh, they did not submit their personal statement nor letter of recommendations, but they were still accepted. Um, what I can say from the admissions side is that it might be a question that's better suited with your admissions advisor um, because they may know your situation a bit better. Um, so I suggest getting in contact with them about that. We have a Q&A as well. Yes. It says, if you are an alumni and already have an MS degree from GMU, do you still have to have the two letters of recommendation? Yes. I, I was an, a George Mason alumni, and I still had to have the two letters of recommendation. And then here we got another one. I got a bachelor's degree in accounting. If I yeah. want to apply to this master's program, there are many courses that I need to take before I can apply to meet the requirement, right? Yes, that, that's why we have those three courses. Um, this is very much an engineering program, although we do get a lot of students from undergraduate degrees like accounting or, or non I should say from non-engineering degrees. Um, but you do, so that's why we require uh, one semester of undergraduate calculus, one semester of undergraduate statistics, and one semester of, of, of a programming language to give you the basic skill sets you need to be successful in the program. All right, any other questions? Oh, I see another one. I spoke with an admissions representative yesterday who suggested I ask this evening about provisional or ex or conditional acceptances as I am registered to take an intro to computer programming course with a focus on Python that ends August 8th. I already have a math degree. Would this meet the prerequisite if I earn a B or higher before the fall start? Well, you wouldn't have to be provisional at that point in time if you've met all the requirements um uh, you know by having an undergraduate calculus undergraduate statistics and then this programming course 
then there is no reason for you to be provisional at that point in time. You know, the, uh, you know, you would just apply and I think the deadline for the uh, uh, application process is August 11th for the fall, so. Yes. Um, and then we've got another question from Luis. It says, would an MIS entry level class into R be considered as a, com a computer programming course? I, that's, that's a hard one to, to, to answer because, um, you know, programming courses typically, typically go over concepts such as, you know, the three basic control structures of any programming, uh, of any program, and, uh, and, and as well as uh, rudimentary um, algorithms and analysis. So um, those are skill sets you have to have, and I, you know, not knowing what that course is, you can teach, you can teach a programming language. There are many uh, courses out, you know, that you can get on Coursera, um, um, you know, Udemy, any, any of those online, massive online open courses, you know, MOOCs, but the problem is they're just teaching the programming language and not teaching fundamental programming concepts that you need to understand to be a good programmer. And then we've got another one that says, could you please explain the math courses that we will need to pass? Um, are you talking about the prerequisite or are you talking about cor uh, courses in the program? I think they're, they're referring to the prerequisites. It's, it's uh, one semester of undergraduate calculus and one semester of undergraduate statistics. Oh, in the program. Oh, in the program. Well, that depends on uh, the course you're taking. For example, uh, OR 531, uh, which is a very good course, by the way, um, uh, uses uh, Excel spreadsheets, uh, of all things, to be able to teach concepts like Monte, uh, Monte, Car Monte Carlo methods. So you know, it, it just depends on the course. When, we are, when you're taking STAT 515, um, uh, the course is very much, at least when I took it on, on campus, now I can't, can't vouch for how the online course has, has been changed over the years, but uh, back when I took it, it was an online course that focused on the, uh, how to visualize data in two dimensions and used R programming as the method for doing that. So we didn't have to know you know, the, the mathematical formulas for statistics. Remember, this is an applied program. And so, but we very much needed to be able to, you know, do analytics using our programming, using the R Studio uh, uh, um, uh, development environment, integrated development environment, and, uh, and generated visualizations uh, throughout the course. And so I found it a, a, a breeze to actually, you know, based on my f foundational knowledge of statistics to be able to pick up the more advanced statistics work that they taught me in, in STAT 515. All right, and we've got a few more questions. Um, it says, outside of the initial prerequisites, is there anything you recommend we can do to better prepare ourselves for the program if our background is more based in data science instead of engineering, and this will be our first engineering master's program experience? I, I think if you've got a background in data science and you, you understand programming uh, and, and can pick up Python and R fairly quickly, I think you'll do fairly well. Um, Everything you need, for example, if you don't know anything about relational databases, um, they, that's what CS504 is all about. Um, um, OR531, like I said, goes into different types of an analytical tool, uh, tools like Monte Carlo methods. Um, then, you know, STAT515 visualizations and more R programming there. Um, so, uh, that's that's you know I, I don't if you already have a background in data science you probably won't have too much difficulty picking things up you might run into some problems when it comes to looking at cloud deployments um, AWS um, Microsoft Azure um, some courses do uh, I think the um, IT 580 course um, does an AWS but it's fairly simple to pick up. That's where the operating, understanding how operating systems work, virtual machines work um, is, is good for that course. Um, there was a question up actually above that from Toka said, uh, would bus 310 and bus 210 be counted as statistics? I don't know those courses. Uh, I assume you're talking there, they're in, in the George Mason courses.
for prerequisites? Yes, from George Mason. Um, we'd have to we'd have to look at that. I don't. I, I'm not familiar with the the business uh, uh, school of business. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of courses that are co common across many colleges. Um, when we're thinking of uh, undergraduate statistics, we're thinking about the statistics course that's uh, taught by statistics. Yeah. Yeah, but it may it, it may not count. I don't know. We'd have to we'd have to uh, um, whoever's evaluating your application would have to take a look at that and see if it covers the same course material as, for example, the undergraduate stats course. And then we've got another uh, few questions in the Q and A. It says, "I did my first two years in GMU Korea campus and last two years in a Korean local university. So I believe I need to submit a course by course evaluated transcript from Wes. However, I've seen somewhere that if I submit my application early enough, admissions can do the evaluation for me. Is that the same case for this online course as well? Um, it's kind of." A difficult question to answer. Um, we would need your course by course evaluations because you did not complete a full US um, bachelor's degree since you only did the first two years at GMU Korea. Um, but I don't know about George Mason's um, admissions with the online campus at least doing the evaluations for the student. Uh, the next question uh, from an anonymous attendee is, what is the cost of the certificate master's programs? Um, I don't have the current cost. Uh, Miriam, do you have the current cost per credit hour for the not, online program? Not at the moment, but I... I, if I, I, I know it's posted somewhere on one of the web pages. Yes. Um, uh, um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I do know it's a little more expensive than the in-state tuition, but it's a lot less expensive than... Uh, out of state tuition. So it's somewhere in between there. Uh, and as far as the certificate, uh, you can actually you, you can actually apply uh, to get the certificate in the degree program. Uh, it's, it's an extra step that has to be done by the advisor, but many of our students can um, earn a you know, can ask to get the certificate awarded as they're going through the master's degree program. It's just you have to make some extra steps working with your advisor to do that. Yeah, and the way that that would work is, um, you know, all of the classes can transfer into the master's program for data analytics engineering. Um, you would just have to apply again for the program. Um, don't quote me on this, but I believe the app fee is waived for that because you're already doing, you know, certificate to master's. So it's completely possible. Now, when you, uh, the anonymous attendee also said, can we apply past courses taken at another university? To the prereqs, yeah, we don't care as long as it's a uh, um, um, uh, uh, an accredited university. Any undergraduate calculus, undergraduate statistics, and undergraduate programming class will count. Any last questions? These are great. Honestly, this is a lot of participation. I love it. Any last questions? What does the accepted class look like in terms of uh, GPA or um, demographics, um, employment, background, any way to make our applications more competitive for admissions? And would the cost differ for the accelerated program? We, we don't do the accelerated program in the online. That's, right. only for, that's only for the on-ground on campus. Right. Um, and for making applications more competitive for admissions, um, I'm not too sure. What does the data analytics program, you know, look for in the applications themselves? Uh, basically, the, you know, the, the, uh, what you described, um, uh, minimum of 3.0 GPA, undergraduate calculus, statistics, and programming class. Um, and, uh, you, know, you know, certainly with the online program, we're growing. So you know, there's a good chance, that, you know, we're, we're, we're not being restricted. We're not like UVA. We don't, we're not restrictive. We're very, you know, George Mason, is, unlike our, 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 our sister uh, uh, universities within the, within the Commonwealth, uh, we are very inclusive.
and uh, you know, come one, come all. Are there many career switchers in the program and do they seem to have success balancing full-time jobs and coursework? Yeah, we, we actually have a lot of our online students are career switchers. Uh, and I won't lie to you guys, if you if you are, you know, the 20 hours a week is is not exaggeration. Um, you have to carve that time out. You're, you know, for the for the time you're in the program, and it's going to be two years if you take a uh, uh, well, let's see, uh, actually it could be, I think, 18 months if you finish off two classes a semester now and, and go through and work through the summer. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. But you're, you're I mean, I, I've, I have two master's degrees from George Mason. I was in the applied IT program as well as the data analytics engineering program. And um, I gave up my life for four years each time just because I, I had a goal in mind. And that's, that's just the reality of it. You got to balance your work, uh, personal life and school life. It is doable, but you're going to have to give something up. Um, and then it says, what is the program acceptance rate? I can't answer that because I don't know that number. Uh, Dr. Baldo does the uh, admissions acceptance for the program, and I don't have access to that information. All right. Oh, and we've got one more. Are there a lot of applicants slash students with no background in data related fields applying to this program? Is it doable? Do you have recommendations for someone like me? First of all, define non engineering program in this case. Um. Let's see. I'm not sure if they say me. Can you can you give us a, an idea of what what type of degree program you're talking about? And then from Luis, while um, Sammy is answering that, he said, uh, "Did you see the benefit soon after graduating?" Well, for me, I didn't take the course. I I didn't take the analytics program to change jobs. It just so happened <laughs> that, that three years ago when they were looking for an assistant director to the program, I wind up, wound up applying and getting accepted. Prior to coming to Mason, I was actually, for nine years, I was a uh, full professor at the uh, Northern Virginia Community College, Manassas campus. Um, and I actually took data analytics engineering literally for the fun of it. Um, my the, the I mentioned about those seminars that were offered back in 2011. Well, one of the faculty that was offering it was one of the teachers I had taken uh, courses from in the applied IT program. And so when they started the first AIT 580 course in fall of 2013, he invited me to uh, to enroll in his course because he said, hey, um, for, uh, Bernie, this is this is the uh, uh, course in big data analytics. Like, you know, I, all the things I couldn't tell you about when we were doing these classified seminars. Uh, why don't you go join my course? And so I did that, and I was literally in that uh, uh, beginning uh, 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 group of students that started with the program as a certificate, and I I enjoyed the I, I enjoyed the class so much. I said, you know, let me take a couple more classes. Maybe I'll get the certificate. And then six classes into the program, I said, hmm, maybe, and mind you, I, I, I did, didn't actually enroll in the program right away. I was actually just, I was actually a non-degree student. I was just taking classes because they were interesting classes. But six classes into the program, I finally figured out, maybe I better apply to the program. <laughs> and that's what I wound up doing. Um, but yeah, um, so I didn't need the job because um, I already was a, full, a, a pr professor over at uh, uh, Nova. But I know a lot of our students, when they graduate, um, they walk into analytics jobs right away. So now there's some students, uh, mostly international, because they've got visa issues. Um, you know, and a lot of jobs in this area require you to citizenship. Um, but if you are a U.S. citizen, you know, I, at least of the students I've seen, um, they've been able to get jobs fairly quickly in this region. Or actually anywhere in this country, you know, there's, if you, you, all you have to do is take a look at job board postings and there's lots of jobs um, for data analytics engineers. And then um, Sami uh, elaborated saying, I have earned a BS in business degree and I wish to study data analytics the certificate program at the moment. Yeah, um, like I said, the only requirement, and, and you and you do fine, 
Um, as long as you've got those three uh, required courses, undergraduate, one semester of undergraduate calculus, one semester of undergraduate statistics, and one semester of a programming language. Um, that's really, uh, uh, you know, for the certificate, that's really all you need because like, for example, in AIT 580, you're going to do Python programming. In um, STAT 515, you're going to be doing R programming. Um, in OR 531, you're going to use a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet, and uh, uh, an add-on called Problem Solvers. Uh, and then in CS 504, it's uh, um, just creating a virtual machine and, and doing database, you know, running, uh, creating, uh, using uh, uh, databases. So uh, those are all skills you, you'll learn along the way. All right. You guys are on fire with this participation. I love it. I really do. Yeah, this is you're the most lively bunch we've had in a very long time. Yes. Um, any last questions? Ask me anything. Uh, apparently, a number of you are George Mason students already, so I'll be glad to answer any questions you've got. No. Okay. Well, if there aren't any more um, questions, um, thank you so much to everybody who attended our virtual open house. Um, once again, my name is Miriam and I am an admissions representative for George Mason University. If you have any questions for admissions specifically um, regarding your application or any documents, feel free to contact us with the contact information here on the screen. You've got our phone number and then you've also got our email. And then we've also got a link where you can submit um, more requests for information there as well. Any last words, Professor? Nope. Um, <laughs> we, I wish you all luck and uh, enjoy the rest of your summer. And I look forward to seeing you all in the Dandy Analytics program. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody, once again for attending. Take care, everyone.